So now that you got your roof deck completely tore down, any bad wood has been repaired, everything is solid and ready to go. Again, if you have any inspections required in your area, you need to check and see if you require a deck inspection. That's the time to have it done. Coordinate ahead of time so you're not waiting on them. They'll just do a quick inspection, make sure the decking is good and neat, see if you need anything brought up to code, whatever. That's beyond the scope of this video because I don't know where you are watching from. Here in my area, there's absolutely nothing required. So it's all prepped and ready. You're taking that responsibility in your own hands. This is good to go. We're gonna start by putting the gutter apron down on the eave line. We'll talk about a couple pieces real quick on the market. So this is actual gutter apron. It's just a straight little L section, not quite a 90. It's got a little hem down here for the water runoff. This is drip edge, goes on the gable ends. A lot of guys around here use drip edge on the bottom. It's not a problem, but there is a downside to this and an advantaged apron. Downside to this, this lip that comes out, when you got a gutter trying to catch water, some of these actually hang down further and then you wanna hang your shingles down past that. So you're reducing the effectiveness of your gutter down here actually catching the rainwater. So you may not wanna use drip edge on your bottom. You wanna use gutter apron. The advantage to gutter apron is it goes down typically further over your fascia board as well as up your roof deck further. It does not have the overhang right here like the drip edge does. So you can hang your shingles down a little bit but you're not reducing the effectiveness as much of your gutter catching the rain. So you'll put these pieces down on the bottom. Again, it goes up higher in the roof deck, and the importance with that is, is your ice and water can seal those nails a whole lot easier. This is actually a pretty big piece of drip edge, but you can see the difference from where that bend is. It goes up an extra three quarter inch. I'm sure that one goes down about the right same height. But anyway, you want to use your gutter apron on the bottom. They do have steel, they do have aluminum. That's your personal preference. Steel is more rigid, but it's gonna rust over time. Aluminum, a little more flexible. It'll kink a little easier when you're working with it if you're not careful, but it's never gonna rust out. So for this, we're gonna use aluminum apron on the bottoms and aluminum drip edge on the gables. You're always gonna start your bottom first. There's different ways and techniques you can do. This is not the only way to do it. We're gonna go ahead and get a piece started right here. In the bottom where you have an L section come together in an inner valley, you can either butt right to it and butt this right to it, or you can actually cross them. I'm not a fan of crossing them. If you do cross them, the biggest thing you need to make sure of, you don't have any sharp jagged edges in your valley protruding gonna cut into your ice and water valley roll and shingles. So just be aware of that. For the sake of this video, we're gonna bend it and cross over just so you can see. A pair of snips. Cut off a section of this face. We're gonna make the parts actually gonna cross over. So this will cross the valley. We're also gonna come about a quarter inch, half inch, something like that. And we're just gonna fold this right here to close to a 90 degree. And what that'll do when you bring this next piece over it will cover that, but it will have a good clean line right here. So if you have any kind of a gap without it, you would just see into the wood. This will actually ensure that it folds back and the next piece is going to rest on it. Once you get that kind of set where it's going to be, mark your face out here, cut it. You can also hang your face over just a little bit and fold it over so the same con you know, the concept of that gable end coming down, it will overlap a little bit. It just makes it a little cleaner. Again, it's not necessary. Some people think it traps water, some people don't do it. It's up to you. Um, I've probably run into more trouble folding this over when you've got a gutter that's hanging out too far because it's gonna hit the gutter, obviously. So you can't do it in that case. We're going to be using an air nailer for the installation of this inch and a quarter coil nail. It's a Hitachi air nailer. I believe they've changed the brand, but anyway, I'll leave a link up to this gun in the description down below. It's my favorite roofing gun. Make sure it's in and 
pulled up firm to the fascia board. And then right here is where you're going to want to make sure this is pressed in to the contour of your roof deck. You don't want any sharp jagged edges. So you can just do this right here. Again, for the sake of the video, we're going to cross over for it. But what that does, I don't know if you can see with the camera there, if it's got a little bit of a gap, it's still covering it. Cut this one off the face of the decking, but the fascia board comes back about a quarter inch. We're going to go ahead and fix it. If you screw something up, it's better to just go ahead and fix it right then and there. This wouldn't have really caused any problems whatsoever. But it's a good point to point out. You're going to want to make sure you check your fascia board, not just your top deck, because you want it to ultimately be flush with your outer edge. That's where I went wrong on that one right there. For the sake of the video, we're going to fix it. Got it marked. this camera angle works. I actually had done this once with the GoPro on my forehead, but watching it back just within a couple of minutes, I just started getting dizzy because the camera was moving everywhere. So that's why I got the camera set up on the tripod over here. Okay. Go ahead and get it lined up. Shoot it off. Again, make sure this is pressed into your valley area. If you have any nails sticking up, go ahead and drive them down. You don't want anything sticking up in the valley. So it's not often you come into a fascia board and a gable that terminate with a valley. In that case, it's fairly important, at least my thought is, the way water flows downhill, you just want to think like, okay, water's coming down, which way would it go? That you lap things correctly. So in this case here, we're going to actually take this apron and cross over the valley a little bit by removing the top side and letting the bottom hang over just a little bit. It doesn't need to be much. If you were to roll this up, it's the same concept. What you're after is have a little bit of the face this way. So when you bring your gable down, it can lap onto that. The other important thing is you're typically going to dry your roof in and then your apron or I'm sorry your gable covers over your paper but in a case like this down here you want to make sure you've got a small piece on first so your valley roll and ice and water crosses it and the reason that's important and I'll show you here actually it might make more sense with it so let's go ahead and get this angle cut to simulate a 912 which is about what this pitch here is Now 
and then I'll show you what I'm talking about with the ice and water. So you're just simulating roughly the pitch of this roof. But what you're after is hanging this one down just a little bit so it laps onto there. So any water coming down your gable end will be on top of this piece. So if you were to put your ice and water in here now and then put your gable end on this, if you had a leak in your shingles and it's on your ice and water, it's going to go under your edge metal and then into this wood piece down here. Not a good situation. So you're going to put a small piece on on your bottom down here like this. Then put your ice and water and valley on. That way if there's ever a leak, it'll be on top of your metal and on all sides. So we're just going to shoot this little piece on. You don't want any loose pieces of metal bouncing around. Just make sure it's pinned off. <coughs> so we'll put this ice in, your valley, tuck under this, and then your gable will go on top of that. So we'll go ahead and do that right now real quick. <coughs> so let's move on to your gable end pieces here. Notice where I took that piece of ice. I cut it a little bit of an angle, so if you ever have any water come down, somehow it's going to catch and run down. You're going to lap that a little bit. Mark your height up here. Show you a little tip and trick to the edge metal. <clears throat> so typically, on your bottoms, if you're using drip edge or on a gable, when you overlap two pieces like this, it's going to start flaring us out. It could kind of kick us out. It may not lap good right here. Most of the times you can get away with it by giving a little tap, but if you need to, here's a little tip. Just trim like a little bit of a 45 right here. Some actual brands and manufacturers make these clipped on each end. So when you overlap these here, I don't know if you can see that far back. Your face and your top are actually lapped, but with that, it kind of gives a little bit of a relief cut. So it's not going to stretch the metal out. That's it. So when getting ready to do your gable end metals, you want to make sure a couple little things. Cosmetics, little detail is going to help out a lot. So say your front door and your driveway is over here and you're going to be pulling in and seeing this metal a lot right here, or this section of your roof. If you were to lap them like this, so put this on and then this side, you're going to see that little piece. It's not going to cause any issues, but just keep a little detail like that in mind. So if you lap them that way, looking up it, you're not going to see it. Kind of like vinyl siding or siding for that matter. When you're pulling in, any way you look, you're typically, as the installer, going to keep those little detail in mind so you don't see those laps. So in this case, we're going to assume the door and the driveway is over here and the porch and the patio where people hang out, have their cocktails and things. We're going to edge this side and then this side. If you were just to put this bottom on flush with the bottom, you got a big piece missing. So based on the pitch of your roof, you're going to make an imaginary line and cut that off. Shove it down so it covers this and then cut this bottom off here. Just want to make sure it covers that there. Then you're going to want to find your top center about where the two pieces would come together where this one and that come to make contact up in the top. If you're not sure, cut it a little long, you can always trim it. Also, this face piece, this first piece, you're going to cut at a 90 degree angle. Your second overlapping, you're going to cut at the angle so it gives it a nice vertical look to it. I'll show you that here in a second. Actually, probably a little long. So 
imagine these coming together. Now you don't really see that lap, but you also want to make sure it's straight. So you're just going to come down at an angle to make that vertical. Use a pencil, sharp blade, whatever, mark it, eyeball, it doesn't matter. Now when it's on there, you're going to have a fairly good clean look going vertical with it. You're also ready to get this side here. I'm going to have to check my GoPro battery here in a minute. I know it was getting kind of low. I might need to switch it out. Get those lined up. There you go. When your shingles, your starter overhang this, your shingle is all roofed out, your ridge cap crosses over this, it's going to look good. So looking up close at this now, if you're a pull in this side of the house up over here and you look up that, you're going to see a nice clean edge. You're not going to see a lap like that right there constantly pulling in. I know it's a small detail, but a little detail like that throughout the project, your whole project, it's going to look really good. So here's a close up of the area that I was talking about. You want to make sure this fascia. Uh, gutter apron crosses over and then your gable drip edge comes down and overlaps. You also want to make sure your valley roll ice and water is all on top of it just at your bottom section so when the seal's down you're not going to have any leaks getting in behind your edge metal. Here's a close-up of how I cut this at a, about a 45 or so. It gives a little bit of a relief so this face can expand when it's overlapping the other piece of edge metal and of course you just overlap the face here. And here's a quick close-up of the center where we actually cross this one over a little bit. So you can see there, it gives it a nice clean look. We're going to stop here to switch the GoPro battery out. We will restart.